Hey gang, coming at you with a video on strain gauges today. We've talked about strain before. What is strain? Strain is just deformation. It's just a change in length, right? So how do you measure strain anyway? Well, it turns out strain is measured with a little gauge. It takes a physical reading of how much something has stretched and uh, gives you a feedback on that. And then it gives you that in probably something we, what we call micro strains. Now what I'll do is I'll show you. I've got a picture here that I've sketched of a typical strain gauge, okay? 3 16ths by a quarter inch. 3 16ths of an inch wide, quarter inch tall. <laughs> I cut one out for you here out of orange paper. I've got it in a pair of tweezers, okay? It's that big. It's a little bitty guy, okay? And what this thing does is you would glue this bloop, with epoxy onto a specimen, right? And then once the epoxy dries, this is basically a part of the specimen. Now, what is this made out of? This is made out of mylar, okay? So if y'all have been to the grocery store and you're checking out the grocery store and there's an I love you balloon right there, a silver balloon, that's mylar. It's that thin plastic film, okay? And what we do is we print on that film a little wire, like a printed circuit, okay? And that wire goes back and forth and back and forth and back and forth on that gauge. Well, imagine if I took that back and forth and back and forth and back and forth, right? And I stretched that out, I might have a wire that long, okay? Now, if I take this gauge and I stretch it, right? And what do I have? I have a, 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 a measurement across here. I'm reading resistance across that. So when I stretch that, I'm essentially stretching that whole long skinny wire. It just happens to be all back and forth on one tiny little piece there. And what I can do is I can relate that change in resistance to a change in length, okay? So that's what a strain gauge is. Now, strain gauge only works in kind of one direction, okay? Strain gauge works in this direction, okay? It has to go in this direction because what I'm doing is I'm stretching and I'm making that wire longer. If I go this way, I don't really make the wire longer. So let's say I have something like, uh, I don't know, a bolt, okay? This is a head bolt on a, Hot, on your hot rod, there's there's uh, threads down here. Okay, so there's there's a, a hex bolt, let's say. Okay, I might be able to come in here and put that string gauge right there, and I'm gonna just uh, glue it, epoxy it onto that bolt, and then as I tighten that bolt up, all right, here's the threads on the bolt. I'm gonna be able to see a change in length of that gauge. Now, strain is directional, remember that, okay? So what happens if I put it on this way? What happens if I put it on that way? Well, it's not gonna measure very much. I mean, it'll measure a tiny amount because Poisson's ratio, right? If it stretches this way, it contracts that way. Now that's a good point. Strain, the strain gauge will work in both directions, okay? So it will also work if there is a compression applied to the, to the strain gauge, okay? So the strain gauge needs to be put on there in the direction of the stress that you're going to measure. But wait a minute. What if we've got a wacky load, okay? Here we go. This is, here's a wacky load. I've got my air compressor tank out of my garage, okay? There it is, okay, and I don't know what's happened, but somebody has applied a gigantic torque to it, and there's a big old pressure on the inside, and what's the pressure trying to do? It's trying to push the ends off, remember with a little PR over 2T, it's trying to make the hoop, hoop, there it is, get bigger all the way around, right? So it's stretching this way, it's stretching that way, it's tw it's twisting. Uh, I've got a lot of loads on this, and I'm like, ah, I don't know how to measure strain on this. 
So I come back on this, on my cylinder here, and let's just say I put one on, I put a gauge on it, I glue a gauge on it, right? There he is, dude, plus minus. And I measure at 45 degrees. Is that good enough? Well, not unless the stress is at 45 degrees. I don't know where it is. So let's put another one on here like this. And we'll measure it in that direction. Let's put another one on here like this. And we'll measure it in this direction. Okay. And so here we go, plus minus. Okay. So what we wind up with is something like this. And we'll call this A, B, C. Now, put the pressure on it, put the torque on it, and we're just going to take these readings, okay? And let's say that these are 45 degrees and 45 degrees, okay? Well, guess what? We have just created what is called a strain gauge rosette, okay? A rosette is just an arrangement of a whole bunch of strain gauges. So what does that do? If I don't know the direction, that sounded Spanish then, direction of the, of the stress, I can put strain gauges on there and I can measure it at three different directions. Now, with something called the strain gauge rosette equations, dun, 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 dun. okay, now if you've got like the equation sheet from the front of the book, bad news, okay? These equations are not on that, okay? But they're not really hard to remember. They're all exactly the same. They're the same as that, same as that, same as that, except this changes. A here, B here, and C there, okay? That's the only thing that changes. So it's not super hard to remember. You might want to memorize those before you go into the test and then write them down on the front of the test as soon as you get there so you don't forget, okay? But these are the strain rosette equations. So. Each one of these strain gauges is going to output you, right? It's going, is going to output you some kind of number, okay? Let's, let's make up a number, okay? Let's make up a number. This one says it's 600 micro strains. Remember, micro is equal to 10 to the minus 6. And remember, strain doesn't have any units, does it? It's like millimeters over millimeters, okay? Let's say this one's negative 450 micro, and this one's 500 micro strains, okay? So I've got these three things, right? This one came from C, so this, this is strain C. This one came from B, so this is strain B. And this one came from A, so he is strain, that's a B, he's strain A, okay? So those are just given values, okay? Now, if I want to use my transformation equations or my favorite, my transformation favorite, more circle, okay, I need this. I need strain in the X. I need strain in the Y, this guy, that guy, and I need gamma X, Y, the shear strain, right? I need those three things so I can plot my coordinates, I can plot my circle and then I can transform it and I can find out everything I want to know about the strain on this device. I can find out about strain at any angle in the world you want to know, okay? Because more circle, once I get it on there, I can transform it wherever I want, can I? Okay? Well, how do I find one, two, three unknowns? Guess what? But you got to have three equations, man. One, two, three. So that's what I do. That's why I have three equations, okay? So I can put these in here, right? This is strain A, B, and C. Here's strain A, B, and C. Plug that in. But then what is this? Okay? Well, I'll tell you what that is. This guy right here is at zero degrees. This guy right here is at 45 degrees. And this one up here is at 90 degrees, okay? So it always goes from zero here all the way around, okay? So, guess what? So, uh, theta A would be zero. There'd be a zero there. Theta B would be 45, and theta C would be 90. Take that, put it in my, what? Here it is. Damn, world's greatest calculator. My TI-36 Pro with the system solver on there that does three by three equations. Put these three equations in, hit solve, boom. I know 
sigma or uh, strain in the x, strain in the y, and shear strain. Okay. So those are your shear strain, uh, or your uh, I'm sorry, your strain rosette equations. So here are these are probably the the, the two most commonly used strain rosettes. Is this one here that's at, at 0, 45, and 90, just like I drew down here, okay? And in that arrangement, or you'll see them in this arrangement here where they're spaced 120 degrees apart. But I need three gauges to have three equations to solve for a strain in any direction I want. Now, these gauges don't have to be uh, arranged in these particular rosettes. They can really be, you can, you can choose what you want, but these are some of the more common uh, rosettes that you'll see. So anyway, so that's what a strain gauge is, that's what a strain gauge rosette is, and that is what the strain gauge rosette equations look like. So in the next video, we're going we're gonna to take an example problem. I'm going to give you some of this business here. We're going to plug it in there. We're going to draw more circle. We're going to transform it. Hold on to your hat. See you next time.